Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to solve this inequality, okay? This type of inequality. Of course, the, this is the problem. And what you really have to pay attention to is this right here. So I'm kind of kind of refrain right now on telling you what type of problem this is. Of course, you can look at the title of the video. It tells you what type of problem this is. Ah, let's just go ahead and say what it is. This is an absolute value inequality problem, okay? So if you're taking a course like Algebra 1, this is something you certainly need to know how to solve. It's not that complicated, but it definitely can confuse a lot of students. Nevertheless, if you can uh, figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then, of course, we're going to solve this step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep, or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below, and if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here we have the absolute value of negative r over 9 is greater than 2 thirds. What is the answer? Let's go and take a look at it right now. The answer is the following. Okay, r is greater than 6 or r is less than negative 6. And of course, you could put this on a graph as well. But uh, if you got this correct, well, that's outstanding. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100%. And a few stars, so you can tell your friends and family that you understand absolute value inequalities. They'll be very impressed to know that information. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution here. And uh, before I get started here, we are talking about the topic of absolute value. Okay, there is kind of a lot to know. And uh, absolute value tends to confuse a lot of students, okay, because there's different type of, of problems. There's things like this. I'm just going to make something up. 2x plus 1. Absolute value 2x plus 1 is, let's say, equal to 9. So this is an absolute value equation. If I take this and I put a little inequality symbol on it, that's an absolute value inequality. Now, how I solve an absolute value equation is different than the way I solve an absolute value inequality. And uh, students tend to confuse the procedures here. Okay, so if you're studying absolute value, you really got to pay attention to the various procedures that you are learning in your class. But let's go ahead and get into the problem right now. Okay, so how do we solve an absolute value inequality? Well, the first thing we need to do is to rewrite this absolute value inequality as what we call uh, into a compound inequality, okay? So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take what's inside the absolute value. Now, there's some other conditions here as well. In other words, I could make this more of a uh, more complicated, but we're just going to stick to this basic problem. For example, if I had 2 absolute value of x over 3 minus 9 is greater than or equal to, let's say, 11, then I would have to do some additional steps, uh, namely isolate the absolute value part of this inequality before we take this uh, particular step. So I'm kind of just focusing in on what we're doing on this specific problem. But if you need help with absolute value, whether it's uh, equations, inequalities, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. Plus, you really want to, you want to check out like my full-on Algebra 1 course in my Math Help program. Okay, but the first thing we need to do is take what's inside this isolated absolute value. Okay, so we have our absolute value on one side of the equation and a number on the other side. So if you have uh, your absolute value equation in this format, okay, or this at this uh, point, now you might have to do some cleanup work before it's at this point, but in this particular problem, oops, I gotta erase my three, uh, yeah, we are ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do now, okay, is get this thing out of this absolute value by putting what's inside the absolute value function in the center. Okay, so we're gonna write that, and you're gonna just basically follow this procedure, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, two-thirds, well, let me just actually uh, back up here because there's a lot of different things going on. I'm dealing with the greater than symbol, so I'm gonna write that symbol here, and I'm also gonna write it here on both sides of what I just took out in the middle, All right? So just follow this, um, kind of uh, steps that I'm kind of laying out for you right here. So again, I want to take what's inside the absolute value function, which is negative r over 9. I want to put that in the middle, and I'm going to surround it by the same 
uh, inequality symbol. So this is a greater than symbol. I'm going to put it here and here. Okay. So if you understand that, let's talk now about the two thirds. So the two thirds, I'm going to keep whatever's uh, this number. I'm going to put it right here. There's no change there. And then I'm going to put the negative of that number, which of course would be negative two thirds over here. Okay. All right. So you really need to kind of understand this setup. Okay. Uh, now, if you understand what I just told you, okay, again, take what's inside the absolute value function, put it in the middle, keep the same inequality symbols going in the same direction, uh, put this number there and the negative of that number here, then we are ready to go because what we're dealing with at this point is what we call a compound inequality. So to solve absolute value inequalities, you need to be able to solve basic linear um linear inequalities and what we call compound inequalities, those inequalities that deal with and and or statements, okay? So you don't study compound, uh, sorry, you don't study absolute value inequalities until you master these type of inequalities. Again, if you need review with any of this stuff, just check out like my Algebra 1 course. But now what we need to do is deal with this compound inequality. All right, so let's talk about that now. So basically what we're going to do is you can kind of think of it as solving for R, okay? In other words, we want to get R in the middle all by itself, all right? So we want, it's, we have a negative uh, R over 9. What we want is just an R in the middle, okay? So we have negative uh, R over 9 and we want R. So how can we make that happen? Well, what we're going to have to do is multiply this thing by the reciprocal. Okay, so here this is negative r. It's really negative 1r over 9. So if I multiply negative 1 1 ninth r, okay, or you can kind of think of negative, negative 1r over 9, by, if I flip this right here, negative 9 over 1, if I do this, what's going to happen? Well, this is a negative times a negative. It's positive. The 9s are going to cross cancel, and I'm going to le be left with an r, okay? So again, Got to be familiar with uh, solving compound inequalities. So that's what I need to do. I need to multiply, okay, this uh, expression, negative r over 9, by negative 9, or negative 9 over 1, because we are dealing with fractions, to get to an r. Now, no, I know I'm being redundant, but I want you know, I really want you to make sure you understand what's going on. So now what I need to do is whatever I had to do in the center okay, of this compound inequality, I need to do on both sides, okay, so if I had to multiply the, this negative r over 9 by negative, uh, negative 9 over 1, I got to multiply both of these numbers on the um, outside of this uh, compound inequality as well. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the next thing we need to be very, very, very mindful of when it comes to inequalities. As a matter of fact, let me just show you right here with a basic example. So let's say I have two x's less than eight, okay? Uh, I'm gonna actually have, uh, actually let me show you uh, three quick little examples. Two x's less than eight, um, negative two x is less than eight, and negative one half x is less than eight. Okay, so here, the next step when you're dealing with inequalities, the main, main idea, uh, these are simple linear inequalities, but basically, if you want to um, solve an inequality, you gotta essentially use the same steps as you solve an equation. So here, I have if I have two x is less than eight, all I need to do is divide both sides of the inequality by two, so x is less than four. No problem there. And notice nothing happened with my inequality symbol, but here is the big, big thing you always have to remember when you're dealing with inequalities. If you divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, like in this situation here, I have negative two x is less than eight. I'm gonna divide both sides of the inequality by negative two, I'm gonna get x. Now, what happens? Well, anytime you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the inequality symbol reverses, okay? You can never forget that. So it's gonna go from a uh, less than to a greater than. You have to reverse that inequality symbol, not all the time, okay? Only when you're dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative value or multiplying both sides of an inequality by a negative value. So here, negative one half x is less than eight. I can multiply both sides by negative, um, uh, let me just kind of erase this all right here. 
So to solve for or get x by itself, I can multiply both sides of the equation by negative 2 over 1. Okay, that's the same scenario. So when you divide or multiply both sides of, the, of an equality by uh, a negative value, you still reverse. And so multiplication as well, so this would be x is less, greater than um, negative 16. Okay, so I'm going to put a little negative 2 in there. So I'm kind of being a little bit sloppy, but hopefully you understand what's going on because that's extremely important that you understand this because if you don't understand this, you won't be able to take this problem to the next level. Okay, so let's go back to our original compound inequality. Uh, we understand, okay, to get R by itself, I need to multiply that by negative 9 or negative 9 over 1 because we're dealing with fractions. So I need to multiply everything by negative 9. So I'm thinking to myself, hey, I'm multiplying by negative numbers here. Okay, the inequality by negative numbers. So I need to reverse these inequality um, symbols. Okay, so I'm going to go from greater than to less than. Okay, all right, so let's see what happens when we uh, simplify in the middle negative uh, r over 9 times negative 9 will just be r. Okay, and then here I have negative 9 times negative uh, 2 thirds. Negative times negative is positive. 9 times 2, 18. 18 divided by 3 is 6. And then here I have 2 thirds times negative 9. So that's negative 18 divided by 3 is negative 6. So this is the answer. Okay. Now, if you did express your answer this way, we have r is greater than 6 and less than negative 6. That is fine, but this doesn't, we got to be careful with this, right? Because we have a positive number on this side and we have a negative number over here. It's supposed to be negative numbers over here and positive numbers over here. So we have to interpret this for what it really is. Okay, so this is all R's that are greater than six or all, uh, all the R values that are less than negative six. So this is an or situation. And you can better see that graphically. So if I have negative 6, negative 6 is located here. Here's positive 6, right? I could have thrown in here, hey, also graph this solution here. So all, all R is greater than 6 are in this direction, and all R's that are less than 6 are in this direction. So this is an OR graph, okay? An OR graph. So it's these numbers or these numbers, these sets of numbers or these sets of numbers. So this is why the solution is the following. Okay, so hopefully this was a very exciting problem to do. A lot of you are like this, oh my goodness, there's so much to remember in math, absolute value equations, uh, inequalities, you know, how to graph them, quadratic functions, linear equations. Yes, math is a lot of information, uh, no doubt. You absolutely need to be taking great notes, and, and there's really no shortcuts, okay? Anybody tells you there's shortcuts in math, uh, they're just kind of, you know, uh, telling you what you want to hear. Of course, we all want something to be easy, but if you truly want to learn this stuff, you're going to have to take it one skill at a time, okay? So if you like my teaching style, I definitely have a ton, a massive amount of content that can help you out. But hopefully this particular video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.